Hello everyone. Uh, still with me, Farhan Farizi, in today's edition, in today's sessions of Stratus Percent Stay at Home, where in this month's edition we will talk about Human Rights Film Festival around the world. And for today's sessions, we will discussing about Kashis Film Festival in India, which just had its closing days, not closing nights four days ago. And we will talk about specifically specifically about film programming with Sridhar Rangayan as the festival co-founder and directors of Kashis. Sridhar is also our festival guest last year for last year's editions festival. So if you guys have any questions related to Kashis or film with gender expression themes, just ask us through the chat box below and we can answer it later. So let me invite Sridhar to our live today. Okay. Hello. Hello, Sridhar. How are you? I'm okay. Uh, under lockdown, still in India, in Mumbai. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, maybe you can introduce us about a little bit about Kashis. Yeah, so Kashish basically started off as a, a, a film festival to discuss, uh, discuss about gender expression and queer identities. Uh, we started in 2010 uh, as the first mainstream uh-huh. film festival to discuss this particular issue. And uh, we have done the festival for the last 11 years. And the 11th edition just got over just three days ago, as you mentioned. Uh, just yeah. now. <laughs> So it's been a huge journey for us when we started in 2010. It was very, very challenging to do whole different festival like this in a mainstream space. But over the years, it's become much more easier because of the support we have received, uh, not just from filmmakers across the world, but also other people within the Indian film industry and also the government and also the some of the partners who have partnered with us. And now, um, still 2010, uh, it was fantastic. We did this uh, festival in a big Art Deco theater with 1,200 seats. And we pretty much filled up that as a theater. But this year we had to go virtual because of the lockdown and the uh, corona situation. Uh, but the, uh, I would say that the, um, the uh, 11th edition was hugely successful. And we are really happy to discuss that with you. And uh, hello, congratulations, Manusia. I mean, I was there at your <laughs> festival uh, last year. And it was a fantastic yeah, festival year. at York City. <laughs> That's right. So maybe can you tell us uh, why did you help Kashis with your friend? Yeah, basically the thing is we felt that like at that point of time in 2010, there was not enough dis- discussion happening about uh, gender expression and queer identities. And we felt that mm-hmm. we wanted to raise this conversation in a mainstream space. Earlier, there have been film festivals which were held in colleges uh, and cultural institutions. But there was nothing which was held in a mainstream theatrical space. So that's the reason we said. So we wanted to do two things with Kashish. One is for it to be a celebration for the community itself ah, okay. uh, to be able to mm-hmm. watch uh, their own life reflect on the big screen. But also for the mainstream audiences to understand what uh, a queer culture is and what the gender uh, identities are per se. So that's the reason we did that. We've been very successful in that because 30% of our audiences are non-community members. That's mainstream audiences. So uh-huh. that for them has that's been great. a big learning. Yeah, it's been a big learning for them to understand what uh, uh, queer expressions are. And uh, also they've come to an understanding that like we need uh, a space for all identities to be uh, alive and uh, uh, flourishing uh, so that we have an equitable world. Okay, that's great. <laughs> so uh, we were uh, we were gonna talk about film festival programming in this session. So I, I'm really curious, and uh, I really wanna ask: uh, How do you select and program for the film? Uh, for the how do you select and program the films for Kashis? So is Kashis any... is basically uh, yeah uh, invited. We invite submissions from across the world. Uh, in the mm-hmm. first year, we had very few submissions because it was a new festival. But over the last yeah. seven years, we have, have a lot of people across the world who uh, submit to Kashish and many of them wait to submit to Kashish to have their uh, international premiere or sometimes a world premiere at Kashish. Uh, so this year we received, I think, 700 submissions uh, out of which we basically have a preview committee 
uh, which uh, sees mm. all these films, and they basically make a selection based on the quality of the film, but also more than quality, aesthetic or technical quality, but also more importantly, what the content of the uh, uh, film is about. You know, uh, the film yeah. should be able to convey a story uh, in an interesting way. uh dramatic or humorous or whatever the uh, genre of the film is and uh, be able to communicate that in that sh- sometimes in a short film in a short span be able to communicate that and uh, so we have had a huge number of uh interesting films right from comedies to drama to musicals to uh, uh supernatural thrillers <laughs> so i mean we program a wide diversity of uh, uh, films in the genre and it's been a challenge for us to be able to i mean uh, out of the 700 films we selected 157 films to play at this year from 42 countries and it's been always a challenge to shortlist sometimes we feel oh boy we lost out on a film uh, which we should have shown perhaps but that's always happens with any big festivals where we are able to only program on 25% of what we receive uh, at the festival um so the preview team comprises of uh, uh, professionals from various uh, uh, fields like we have a uh, a uh, film uh, professionals two film professionals we have people from the community uh, also uh-huh. we have people who are journalists so we have diverse uh, a set of preview team members who understand what kashish audiences are about and definitely program mm-hmm. it according to that but finally it's uh, the final ball lies in the uh, sagar gupta the director of programming court he finally has to make a decision about what finally the films go in and also we have uh, uh, nine competition categories so some of the best films in each of these categories compete for a cash award i think we had rupees 2 lakh rupees cash award i don't know how much it converts into in indonesian currency <laughs> i can figure that out but uh, we had uh, uh, we have nine uh, competition categories and uh, it's very hotly competed so it's not about the prize money but about the prestige of winning at kashish that is huge yeah. for a lot of people the filmmakers make a lot of noise about like oh we are in competition etc so uh, we showed 157 from 42 countries but interestingly the number of uh, films from india has gone up uh, in the first uh, year that's in- good we basically showed around uh, we uh, we got submission of around 22 films and we showed all of them but over the last 3 years we have receiving around 60 indian film submissions so wow. people say uh-huh. that like there's not yeah i mean people only count by the mainstream releases of such films but uh, basically there are a lot of films being made in the short film and the independent film genre which do not get a commercial release and for them the uh, film festival becomes a way for them to reach the audiences so out of 60 mm-hmm. indian uh, films we programmed i think uh, uh, 32 films this year uh, 30 films mm-hmm. this year and it was it, the second it's like biggest, almost the uh, half of it right half of it that's right yeah and <laughs> that was almost like 30 films was the biggest uh, uh, second biggest in terms of the number from a particular country uh, we had united states with 60 films uh, i think so and then 32 or 30 films from india so that's a huge thing but only things like these films do not find a submish uh, a platform to uh, uh, be released uh, right now in india because short films and independent documentaries do not find also some of these uh, we also had a couple of feature films but again these feature films are low budget uh, with no star cast um, yeah. but a beautiful storyline very well acted out so we at kashish want to make an effort to help them to find distribution so last year we started a partnership uh, with a theatrical chain called pvr cinemas where we released uh-huh. some of these films theatrically in eight cities so that was wow. something a huge i mean for a short film maker <laughs> having their film uh, released and shown on the big screen in a theater was a huge thing so we hope to continue with this uh, partnership uh, this year too uh, we just hope that once the, of course right now is locked down and theaters are not open yet <laughs> when the theaters yeah. open up uh, we hope to continue this partnership yeah so it's not only the feature film that being screened in the cinema right as you said it's also the short yeah we actually uh, we mainly program the short films at the theaters Uh, and that was a huge success i think we had around six short films which was packaged and ran into a two hour program so that was pretty good and we want to promote that very soon uh, in the next time when we uh, the theaters open up yeah yeah i also read from the from this year's catalog that you always do a student competition right there's a student competition section it's really good That's i right. mean i look where's where's the people uh, it's it's like from all around the world send send their films to your festival 
and I heard from and I just read from Wikipedia that you are the, like the five biggest uh, gender expression film festival in the world. So congrats! Oh, it's to out Asia. It's out Asia. Asia. Oh, it's not in the yeah. world. <laughs> we are going to pick up that very soon, but it's South Asia we're the biggest <laughs> because uh, we've uh, programmed the largest amount of uh, 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 genre films and also like uh, okay. basically our audience. Basically, we are uh, definitely have become the biggest, but we want to basically. I mean, we don't want to compete as such. I mean, we, I mean it's not like competition that we want to be the become yeah. the biggest. <laughs> but uh, basically, we want to enlarge the film festival. to a wider scope so this year because it was a virtual film festival we had it for 9 days usually the film mm-hmm. festival our regular film festivals happens for 5 days in two theaters here there was just um. one platform so we ran it for 9 days uh, if, so pretty much i think uh, we had like almost 3000 uh, views of films so that is oh, pretty huge great. yeah yeah so how long do you prepare for the programming is it like in the month or No, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> we for uh, our festival usually happens in May, and uh, we uh, uh, call for entries in November. So November to mm-hmm. January, we watch all the films, all the seven hundred submissions, and by March we lock down the programming. So and from March to uh, May, we usually uh, get the films ready and the catalog ready and everything. So we almost are working. Once the uh, this edition ends, we are actually on to the next edition, you know. So, uh-huh. <laughs> so that's the way. Like our our team does not get a rest at all. And also, we have basically year round activities. Like I think Manusya also has. We have year round mm-hmm. activities where we screen uh, in different cities. We screen at different colleges. Uh, so those are the things we can continue to do through the year. So you screen also in colleges, which is uh, I, I, it's really interesting actually because in Indonesia it's really hard to screen human rights film festival in colleges. So can you share us a little bit about how you screen it? Or yeah, the, so basically the thing is, uh, yeah, from as I said, like from 2000, uh, uh, um, we started in 2010, and uh, I think after that, from the second year onwards, we started this program called Kashish Forward, uh, which is basically uh-huh. taking LGBT. Uh, these films to colleges, and uh, we approach colleges which are sensitive a little bit. I mean, we don't approach any college. We approach colleges where there's a sensitive, and also many of these colleges have a gender cell, uh, which I talks about that. women's okay. issues. So we approach the gender cell of the college, and uh, they facilitate the screening. We have done, I think, around 32 such screenings in different colleges across India, and not just in metros, but we also done screenings in Tier Two and Tier Three cities. which i really think is important because sometimes in the metro cities there's a lot more awareness about these issues okay. but when we go to tier 2 and tier 3 cities there's really little uh, awareness about these issues so it's for us it's important to basically uh, uh, take these films to the tier 3 cities so that like more awareness can be created and the response has been great usually like the students are very open to uh, such films totally uh, it's the administration which blocks it Okay, I mean usually administration <laughs> are usually yeah they are more yeah, worried about true, how it will all that's right. <laughs> so how it will all work out? What is the reaction? But the students embrace it. In fact, like we have been, we did two screenings in a uh, in a school uh, for uh, a grade twelve students, you know, and they also mm-hmm. get it completely. Of course, we do uh, uh, um, we do uh, uh, have a bit of cautious programming. we do not show all content obviously we pick and select a certain program yeah. which is uh, sensitive to younger minds and uh, but it's been very 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 encouraging the response from ch- the students has been really amazing and uh, we just hope to do more screenings when the lockdown opens up yeah yeah hopefully yeah so how many movies roughly you watch for this year's programming how many so we uh, watch yeah. entry So uh, we got hundred. Uh, we we had seven hundred submissions this year. Uh, I wow, didn't watch all of them. <laughs> there is a lot of submissions. I know. So we received seven hundred submissions this year, and I didn't watch all of them. But the preview team and Sagar Gupta, the director of programming, watched all of them and uh, made the selection of hundred and fifty-seven films. Uh, so that's been huge. I mean, like uh, usually uh, this year actually has been less. The previous years we got almost thousand submissions. Wow. <laughs> There is so much. Wow. I yeah, but Kashish has become popular now, and Kashish is reaching yeah. uh, not just uh, across the world. 
we get submissions from kenya nigeria montego bay mm. uh, trinidad okay. and tobago we, these are countries where uh, uh, queer identities are suppressed and we are really happy and we had couple of films from iran this year so oh, those wow, are the films great. we'd like to show yeah we had i think uh, we had a feature documentary from iran you know about a dancer uh, and it was very well 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 received so those are the kind of films we like to show and also we like to focus a lot more on south asia because we are south asia's biggest a uh, film festival so we program quite a few from south asia we have program uh, films from uh, indonesia then philippines uh, malaysia uh, taiwan and all of them yeah yeah so uh, how how's the process is so is there any particular consideration in selecting the films or no we program films from all countries but usually every year we have a country in focus where we program mm-hmm. a certain set of uh, films from that country and uh, promote it more but this year since it's the online version we didn't have any country in focus uh, but yeah. previous years we have done country in focus like sweden uh, uh, israel uh, uh, usa uk uh, um, italy so we have done country focuses every year this year we couldn't do it because of the uh, because it was a, 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 a online version per se but we're going to continue that so when we do a country focus what we do is we not we don't work with just a submission but we go and try to curate a program where we try to find classics from that country in the genre you know no, so, so uh, we no. uh, we programmed a film which was made in 1947 uh, in uk 2 uh, years ago we searched for that film got the film from the british uh, council british film institute so we make an effort to program uh, our films if it's a country focus uh, classics and popular films and short films yeah okay so is there any challenge in selecting or curating the film no i mean the challenge is to get it down to a sizable number out of 700 <laughs> films as i said we can only show so much and for us it's always heartbreaking when we have to make a choice and leave out certain films and we value all the filmmakers who made these films i mean they really all of them are brilliant but uh, since especially earlier when uh, uh, in the uh, uh, online in the uh, on ground version we had we could only do for five days at two venues so we only could program a certain number of films per se you know um the some of the challenges basically has been that like we are more particular about uh, uh, um films we do not show uh, extreme nudity we do not show extreme violence uh-huh. uh, or we do not show films which uh, uh, represent these communities in a negative manner ideally no i mean sometimes the story demands and that's fine but ideally we would like to avoid uh, films which depict these communities in a negative light so that is one of the things and also we are very careful when we depict uh, 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 films of younger people you know uh, uh, uh stories about younger people we are much more careful in selecting the films so these are the uh, criteria we have but otherwise we love all the films and we just want to program all of them for sure you know and next year if we're going virtual we want to do a 20 day festival and show all the 700 films i'm sure Ah, I see. So, uh, how about censorship? Because we, we in Indonesia here, we really uh, the biggest challenge in uh, showing films is censorship. Do you get any censorship, or you you must through process there? Yeah. So basically, like I mean, uh, when we do the on ground film festival, we basically have to apply for the. Uh, 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 we don't have every film to be censored. We get a clearance mm-hmm. for the entire festival by the INB Ministry, the Information Broadcasting Ministry, issues a clearance to. all the films playing at the festival uh that is if we certify that like these films are safe to be played on audience uh, registered mm-hmm. audience and the preview team the selection committee gives undertaking that they watched all these films and they consider this to be a uh, uh, safe to be played to a, a regular audience you know uh, so we have to get a clearance from the imb ministry we've been doing it for the last 10 years we have never faced any problems till now uh, the imb ministry has been very very supportive because we they see that we are very we are professionals who believe in doing the right things we are sensitive to the audience needs uh, uh, uh we are very sensitive to what we program as i told you that we do not program extreme nudity extreme yeah. violence you know? uh, so we are very sensitive to what we program and so the imb ministry gives us a clearance every year this time since it was a virtual event we didn't have to take clearance at all so for virtual events we just can go scot free but we still stuck to our own uh, censorship rules as i call it you know self censorship mm-hmm. a little bit uh, we did definitely show only films which we felt our audiences 
if they're watching in the theater, they would appreciate the same thing if they're watching it virtually too. Yeah. But otherwise, the uh, uh, the censorship censor board of India is uh, quite strict. Um, so uh, when I'm also a filmmaker, so I make films, and when I apply to the censor board, I always have this fight with them, saying that like, because anything <laughs> uh, uh, with uh, 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 which is about the community, basically they say that it has to be given an adult certificate, and we say that these films which we are making basically are not adult content; they're just. Uh, they happen to talk about a certain community, but they're just not adult at all. So it's always a challenge, and we finally managed to get UA certificate, that is Universal Stroke Adult. So <laughs> that's a bit weird, I know, but Universal Stroke Adult is the certificate we have got. Uh, two of my films, and that's acceptable because then anybody who is uh, uh, above the age of twelve years old can see this film with parental guidance. So that's the way it goes. Uh, UA means like uh, uh, about twelve and with parental guidance. So that's acceptable per se. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, how about uh, so uh, how about the jury selections for the competition section? How do you choose it? Is it always the same as the, uh, every year or? No. Basically, the thing is like uh, so. Out of the one hundred and fifty-seven films which we played this year. Uh, 52 films were in competition in uh, eight categories. So we okay. had like uh, we have amazing partners uh, who sponsor some of the cash awards. So we have cash award close to two lakh rupees, which I told you. Uh, so we have uh, 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 film companies like Wadia Movie Tone and uh, film schools like Whistling Woods uh, International, and also like a, a, a Taiwanese-based OTT platform called Gold Studios. So these are our award partners, you know. Uh, so they uh, partner with us to give away the cash awards, and uh, so the, we always have a, a, a jury panel of eminent filmmakers uh, uh, or uh, actors. So this year we had uh, 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 three jury panels. One was a narrative jury, one was a documentary jury, and one was a student shorts jury. So <coughs> these three jury panels, the uh, three jury members watch the shortlisted films and select the winner. And sometimes it's yes. really tough because some of them say that like all the Uh, uh, nominated films are actually so good. To pick one winner <laughs> is impossible, you know. So I remember, like, uh, 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 one of the jury members, Roy Vadia, uh, who is part of the uh, uh, Riyadh Vadia uh, Award for Best Emerging Indian Filmmaker. He said, "All these films are fantastic. So what do I give it to?" So finally, but he said, like, it has to make a choice. And sometimes they make a choice, and they also give a special mention to another film which they thought was equal uh, worthy. Uh, the special mention does not get a cash award, unfortunately, but they get a certificate, and the winner basically gets a cash award and that beautiful trophy, uh, which we hope that we'll be able to make it once the lockdown opens and we can able to courier it to the uh, participants. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I, I, I was just wondering too uh, if you can share so with what, us. Uh, so just one second, Farhan. What happened was like every year when the jury. Uh, uh, meetings used to happen. They would actually meet at uh, 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 it at, at the theater or at a cafe to discuss in uh-huh. person uh, uh, uh-huh. who are the winners. Finally, this time it was more complex because we had to have virtual discussions through Google Hangout, and uh, they, <laughs> yeah, yeah. these discussions went on for like two hours because it was very difficult to make decisions online, you know, uh, in a Google Hangout per se. Uh, so the discussion went on forever, but finally they made the decisions and. Uh, it was, uh, and and they made the right decisions, all of them. So I mean, we get the audience feedback. Audience are saying fantastic selection, and the winners are truly deserving. So that's amazing. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Okay. So the jury watch the show, uh, watch the films before the festival, right, or during the festival? No, before the festival. Uh, this particular year, because it was a virtual edition, jury watched it before. And they gave mm-hmm. us a verdict like two days before the festival, and we managed to contact all the winners and get their acceptance speech, uh, which played at the closing ceremony, virtual closing ceremony. That was a huge high. Uh, we, we had almost all the winners send their acceptance speech, and we played them uh, at the closing night, uh, like like as if they were on stage at Kashyesh, you know. So that was really <laughs> amazing. That like uh, it was really worth it for sure. Yeah. I was just wondering if you can share with us uh, how it feels like turning the festival into offline format into the virtual format in short notice. Because I believe this year you plan it to be offline, right? But you know the pandemic is coming, so you you must all go virtual. It must be hard, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, for us, basically, uh, um, we had already uh, uh, fixed the festival to be happening in May. 
uh, and uh, basically uh, uh, we had planned everything the film selection were already done uh, uh, by march we had announced the film selection and then suddenly the pandemic hit and we thought like we'll postpone the festival to september uh, when we can able to do the festival uh, on ground like every year but we realize that i don't think even by september the lockdown will open and the theaters won't open till september in india i um, mean india is one of the worst hit countries in the world right now and mumbai where we are we are is the worst hit in the in india per se so we decided that like i think in uh, uh, um, i think in april end we decided that we'll go virtual and so we just had like two months to prepare the entire virtual edition so for us selecting a platform was a toughest per se um because a lot of the american platforms where uh, we wanted to host the festival for them we wanted to basically uh, keep the uh, registration fee very low for indians you know mm-hmm. uh, the same as we every year we used to do which is uh, 700 rupees you know which is like two and a half dollars or something like that you know so none of the american platforms felt that it was worth it to have a festival which charges so low for an entire festival you know so for Uh, for uh three dollars you get to see all the films at the festival you know that that low mm-hmm. you know so the yeah, yeah. some of the american platforms which are really good but finally we were found out the zerb.tv which offered a fantastic uh, space for us uh they basically uh accepted the uh the price we had in mind uh, which was like uh 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 $3 for the entire festival and uh, $20 $40 for the Ameri- the non uh, for the international ones and uh, mm-hmm. their platform made it really easy for us to upload and create uh, virtual events so the way it worked was we created out of the 157 films we created uh, uh, seven programs every day as virtual events and virtual events in india and outside india so people in india could come mm-hmm. and attend the virtual events in india and people outside india could attend the virtual events outside india so we had created 52 programs like this uh some films basically had to be played only in india geo blocked in india because of the distributors restriction they the some of the american films didn't want their films to be shown across the world so they sh- we just showed it only in india but we had a beautiful selection and we had a great audience and what is beautiful about this also was like uh for the first time usually people would ca- had to come to mumbai to attend the film festival be in mumbai you know so this uh-huh. time it was open not just to mumbai audiences but indian audiences across india and across the world so uh, that was huge for us but definitely managing it was tough and also like i mean uh, finding supporters the partners the uh, uh, sponsors uh, because they a uh, lot of them did not see value per se in an online film festival how do they get the yeah. promotional benefit how do they get the yeah. visibility but some of our regular partners stood by us for sure uh the cultural con- uh, cultural uh, cultural uh, uh, institutions and embassies and some of our award partners who have been with us for the last 8 years so they stood with us so yeah we managed to make it happen for sure and uh, we got a great response what was also beautiful was like people across the world uh coming out on social media talking about the films you know uh, uh interacting with our social media handles that is a new thing for us you know uh our digital marketing agency worked really hard to push these films uh and uh, uh information about these films and that was really successful for us yeah congratulations for that yeah it was yeah i see from your instagram account that from kashif instagram account that it feels like you deliver a film festival into each person's house so it's really <laughs> great <laughs> that's nice to hear that i'll tell the digital marketing agency for sure of that <laughs> So are there any special security assessments to avoid film piracy when you're going virtual? Yeah, so basically we uh, uh, checked as I said a lot of platforms and try to see what are the best platform and zerb.tv offered the best protection uh, so that the films are totally secure. Uh, we upload the films, we monitor the films, we pull the films out after the festival and nobody could yeah, are able to download it. So we double checked it, we carried out a lot of tests. before the festival with our preview i mean with our teams so we ensured that like it is totally a uh, 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 safe and uh, uh, piracy proof 
and only then we decided to tell the filmmakers that we are going at with so for us it was a very tough three almost two months where before we uh, uh, finalize a, a platform to be sure that this platform works so we had to carry repeated test within our team so that we are very sure and uh, this particular platform is like totally uh, privacy proof and uh, it's been a great platform uh, uh, basically the ease of playing has been very good Uh, only people felt a bit about. Uh, I think it didn't have different uh, speed controls. Like sometimes in Netflix, you mm-hmm. can uh, uh, opt for different uh, speeds, right, or different uh, uh, resolutions. You know, so yeah. this particular did not have the different resolutions. Uh, uh, but mm-hmm. I think they are trying to put that together again very soon. You know, yeah. Yeah. So how uh, is it? Is it easier going virtual or is it easier by going offline? <laughs> <laughs> no, they both are tough doing a genre film festival like ours which is driven by the community uh, i mean made by the community for the community it's very very challenging anyway you know every year uh, but this year because uh, we were not really prepared for the online version you know so we had yeah. a lot of uh, uh, issues per se <clears throat> but now that like we are prepared for both the online and offline festival we can go both ways for sure and make it successful so we are thinking of next year being a hybrid festival or having uh, one on ground event and maybe one offline uh, event every year so we, are, we we right now we just completed the festival so we don't want to think at all for the next month you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, I can. I I can imagine no, how fantastic it is. Uh, Farah, if you ask me, uh, if you ask me, I don't want to do the next edition at all. I'm done with the festival. <laughs> you know yeah. how we all feel, right? <laughs> yeah. It. I can imagine in two months, you guys uh, turning the offline into the virtual version. It must be really, really hard and hectic, and it's really. <laughs> Yeah. So what about Manusia? Yeah. I mean, what are you people planning now? We are still planning on uh, offline. We we still don't know whether we we going online offline, but I think you can uh, keep following us. Keep call. Keep uh, update us on our Instagram <laughs> okay. because it, this is, want... because the, the situation is in here, in here is the same as in India. The cinema hasn't opened yet. And uh, newly positive cases is always rising every day. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. Best of luck. Whatever way you go is best of luck at that for sure. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, Kashish Film Festival is specifically screening films about gender expressions, right? So, how about the current situation in India right now? So, basically, uh, 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 as you know, in two thousand eighteen. Uh, Section three hundred and seventy-seven was finally removed. Uh, I mean, it was read down completely. So uh, 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 we basically, I don't see too much of a change in the filmmaking pattern. Maybe it's too yet not sunk in, but definitely this year's films basically offered a bigger window to uh, uh, the community's uh, lives per se than the previous years. You know, earlier years films were like, oh, why are we like this? What are what are we? How does the society discriminate against that? But this time there are more love stories. There are more beautiful, uh-huh. positive stories coming out, you know. So uh, definitely, there's a change That's also. Good. But uh, yeah, so it's really good now to see the films and they're really the diverse uh, uh, subject matters they uh, tackle. But uh, we still, I think, uh, what we are yet not able to really talk about is the marginalized communities within the community. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, that is I something think- we want to focus. So this year, basically moving forward together, focus primarily on the marginalized. Sections of the community within the community per se, you know, uh, the gender expressions of the uh, transgender persons, what's which are not being really yet focused on, um, and especially like the thing is like I mean uh, we still have a transgender bill uh, in the parliament, which is basically discriminatory in nature for transgender persons. You know, uh, it basically uh, uh, asks that like the transgender persons has to go through a committee to be certified that they're transgenders. And that is just not okay at all, you know. So yeah, we hope is. that uh, uh, the films which we show as part of the Kashish Film Festival raise awareness and uh, dialogue, you know, uh, about these issues, and hopefully reach the general audiences and the government's ears uh, to be able to bring about a positive change. We just hope so. We had a lot of uh, very interesting panel discussions also, uh, uh, and that really supplemented the film programming. You know, uh, the panel discussions were held on our social media handles. 
and uh, we uh, uh, discuss right from parental acceptance to homophobia in sports uh, 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 mm -hmm. and basically how the film festivals are coping up in the times of corona uh, these were wow. some of the i mean big topics which we talked about and uh, that was really interesting for us to be able to really address these issues through panel discussions and bring about awareness in the larger community and basically these panel discussions are on our youtube and uh, our facebook so people can watch it uh, even now after the festival has also ended you know yeah so are there any uh, film festival human rights film festival in india aside from kashi no in fact like we are the only film festival we we ourselves um, had started another film festival called flashpoint human rights international film festival uh, in mumbai uh, and delhi a uh, couple of years ago but we are not able to sustain the particular film festival because of lack of support per se but yeah. uh, there are basically there are many film festivals which are focused on gender expression and queer identity so we have film festivals in uh, bangalore kolkata new delhi and uh, i think there are a lot more smaller film festivals which has come up but of course kashish is the biggest in south asia <laughs> <laughs> i just say no i'm kidding so i think uh, the bangalore film festival and the kolkata film film festivals are one year older than us even you know they basically mm -hmm. have been doing amazing work all the years uh, uh, the bangalore and the kolkata film festivals and there are a lot of new film festivals which has sprung up and kashish hopes to support these film festivals new film festivals uh, we hope to support them with films or whatever resources they need you know uh, so we also want to kind of uh, bring about a coalition of all uh, 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 film festivals in the genre you know in india we want to make a yeah. network uh, so those are the ideas kashish has and hopefully we'll take it ahead soon yeah i mean so how about the audience uh, how how about the audience there are the people there quite receptive towards gender expression issues yeah i think especially since our festival is held in mumbai uh pretty much people are uh, more comfortable about coming to the theater in the initial years people had more uh, uh difficulty in coming sometimes they would actually uh, wear a, a scarf for the dark goggles ah. and hide their face and come to the screening but over the years they realized that kashish is a safe space where we do not question the gender expression of anybody who comes to the festival they can just come as an audience members and if they want to reveal their gender expression they're welcome to but nobody's going to question you who you are so uh, kashish mm -hmm. as i said it's a mixed uh, space you know uh, 30% of the uh, uh, of the audiences are non community persons you know so pretty much uh, it's a safe space and the people uh, come there just to watch films to mingle with other people and that used to be the on ground thing but virtual it is more difficult we don't even know who attended you know we don't even know the profile we i mean in this times usually in the registration we used to ask the profile uh, do they belong to a certain community what is the age group this time we didn't ask right. any question so anybody just uh, they just had to be about 18 that's all and they just were okay. pretty much open mm -hmm. so we have to we are, it's the festival has just ended so only after that like when i uh, circulate the audience feedback form we i will i know uh, how they all identify themselves or which communities they belong to yeah okay yeah uh, so we have questions from uh, from, from yesterday question box yeah so the first question is how is the situation now for queer people in india during quarantine and pandemic yeah it is really challenging for uh, a queer people uh, especially uh, uh, in the quarantine when they have to be locked up in their own homes with their families who may not yeah. know their uh, who may not know their real identities you know uh, they are not yeah. able to express their uh, real gender identity within the homes and for them is really traumatic and so a lot of people are facing uh, uh, mental anguish so uh, basically uh, we uh, try to tell them to approach a mental health counselor uh, uh, who are also queer friendly so uh, it is really challenging for them and also sometimes uh, the parents as i said like are not supportive and uh, at this lockdown time they have to be confined in these walls with the parents who are not supportive so we try to reach out to them is very challenging and also sometimes yeah, like one of the biggest uh, setback has been how to reach the art medicines for people who are hiv positive you know uh, that has been a big challenge because they have to take their art medicines in time uh, 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 for for them to be able to uh, regulate their hiv status and that has been a big uh, setback per se so they have been amazing set of volunteers from the community who have been working really hard 24 by 7 trying to reach basically medicines or art medicines 
and also food packets and rations because a lot of the transgender person do not have their only profession was basically uh, singing and begging and that has yeah. been stopped because of the covid you know so they don't have any income at all uh, so uh, the community members basically reach out to them with food packets and rations and medicines and uh, so for us these are the real brave rainbow warriors the people who are working or the community persons who are working in the lockdown situation uh, it's a, we need to really salute them so one of the things at kashish what we are doing is like 60% of the money which we have raised through uh, registrations we are going to be donating to an organization working for the community during lockdown um, so okay so that's that's, uh, nice. yeah, that's our way of con- yeah that's our way of contributing to the cause per se and the people who are bravely fighting the uh, uh, pandemic right now on the streets on ground you know okay <laughs> thank you for doing that that's really really nice because the situation is also the same in indonesia yeah and yeah. so is there any significant change that kashish made regarding human rights in mumbai <clears throat> i'm sure it has obviously people when we have the feedback from people fill out saying that uh, they felt really i mean the people who are basically from the community feel that is the first time they ever felt comfortable in a space you know to be able to be themselves they could dress whatever they wanted they can express the way they want to their gender expression and they felt the safest at kashish and also for them it's a big celebration to be able to watch films on the big screen with their families with their of uh, friends and colleagues so for the community members it was a big celebration but also for the non community members it was an eye opener kashish basically uh-huh. helped them understand otherwise their understanding of the community has been just through just small interactions on the streets or uh, at friends places or something for them to watch films which focus on their lives to watch feature films you know uh, to watch uh-huh. documentaries on their lives has been an eye opener that's been the general feedback and they always go back to say that like we're going to be more careful and more sensitive in when we approach uh, people from the community will be more mm-hmm. respectful for their choices and that has been a huge change per se so uh, and also a lot of them have met for the first time people from the community openly i mean so they said oh they are like normal people they're not like anybody who has horns or something like that or tails behind them <laughs> they're just normal people and why did we even think negatively about them you know so yeah, that has been right. a kind of feedback and yeah they've gone back and very positive and now uh, kashish is a huge family per se of like almost like uh, 5000 6000 people uh, and they all basically love kashish and like i think kashish has opened a lot of windows to uh, queer uh, uh, identities and lives per se to general audiences and that has been a big uh, i would say success for kashish as i said we don't count in numbers we count in the quality of yeah. uh, uh, change we can make per se the quantum of change we can make in people's lives and i think that kashish has touched a lot of life for sure yeah that's how we have survived that's how we get so much love <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was just wondering is is every year uh, you guys invited a representation from the government to do a discussions or something like that we never did that no i don't think we want to involve the government at all in anything apart from getting the permission because the governments basically are controlled by political parties kashish do not believe in uh, supporting or endorsing any political party right or left or middle or whatever you know so kashish mm-hmm. is a political kashish has stayed a political all the time and kashish basically is i mean we would like to kind of uh, uh, we i mean we just do not want to subscribe to any political party per se you know uh, so uh, kashish basically is a political and also <coughs> a safe space for all the identities of the gender spectrum you know uh, so we ensure that every year for sure yeah so we have had basically we have had uh, people on a panel uh, discussion who are part uh, who are from the government but they didn't come as a pe- representative of the government or the political party they came as the individual uh, self uh, uh, individual self speaking about it but they did belong to a certain uh, political party and that just came about as it is but not really the focus I see. <laughs> so, I think this question has been answered before by you. So, it's how long have Kashish been held? It's for like ten years right now, yeah. Eleventh year. We just completed the eleventh year. That's right. Ah, uh, eleven years. So. Yeah. And is there really a lot of queer films in India? Yeah, that also I've answered. Like this year, we received sixty 
uh, queer film submissions and we programmed 30 of them. So a lot of uh, output is being made, but they're basically in the short film or the documentary genre, which unfortunately do not get a theatrical release. So Kashish is attempting to find distribution for these films and reach out. So Kashish has actually tied up with Gaga Ulala, a Taiwanese OTT platform. And many yeah, of the Kashish short yeah. films, you know, that, yeah. So Kashish yeah. is basically uh, uh, showing almost like 15 of their Indian LGBTQ films uh, on the Gaga Ulala right now. So is it easy for a uh, film with gender expressions issues to get uh, commercialized screening in India? No, they are very difficult. In fact, like as I said, like, they're just, they just basically, I think, uh, uh, one or two uh, big mainstream feature films uh, with uh, talking about uh, gender expression or queer identities. Uh, and they just get released. But they all also have not been faring very well at the box office. So it's very, unless a film succeeds in the box office, we do not get finances to back more films, you know. So uh, that's one of the reasons, like, I mean, most of the uh, films on this genre in the theatrical release has not been too successful. They've been very successful in the OTT, sorry. They've been very successful mm -hmm. in the OTT platform. Uh, my mm -hmm. own films, Evening Shadows, has been, uh, even just yesterday, has been topping the list on Netflix releases, you know. Uh, uh, oh, trending on Netflix, etc. Yeah. So, but like, uh, it's been doing really well on the OTT platform, but uh, they theatrically is not doing very well because people mm -hmm. still do not feel, I don't know whether they don't want to go and spend that like money to watch a queer films in a theater. And that has to change. Mm -hmm. People have to go and support the films. Only then more films can be made because it's a vicious cycle. Only when the film succeeds, will you be able to get <coughs> investors to invest. Only when you have investors will the actors come on board, the big actors. And it's yeah, a vicious cycle. Right. We need to break that with a big successful film yet, which has not happened yet in India. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what's your favorite films in this year's festival? Oh, no, don't ask me that question. I love all the 150. <laughs> no, I love all the 157 films. But I would say that, like, I mean, a film which really touched me and shook me up quite a bit was One Taxi Ride from Mexico. Uh, made by a oh, Singaporean yeah. filmmaker, mm -hmm. Max E.K. Uh, it's mm -hmm. about a sexual assault of a, a, a young man uh, uh, in a, who's traveling in a taxi. And after 10 years, he tries to reconnect and try to retell his story after 10 years, you know, uh, uh, with the help of the filmmaker. Yeah. That really shook me because that person was assaulted, sexually assaulted. And also he became HIV positive uh, because of the assault. And that for me was a very, very pirate film. And uh, that film basically also won the Best Documentary Feature Award. So I was very happy that the jury is in sync with my thoughts. And also the audience members also loved that film. Uh, so I think, uh, I mean, I, I, it's very, as I said, it's very difficult to name one film. But this film really touched my heart and shook me up. And I definitely want to see it again kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. And of course, the, and of course the, uh, the beautiful film, Music for the Bleeding Hearts, which won the narrative feature. That's an amazingly uh, nuanced uh, uh, storytelling, a lot of uh, uh, fun, a lot of drama, a lot of songs. And I think Music for Bleeding Hearts, the narrative feature which won the competition has been also a great uh, selection per se. And of course, yeah. we, are, we love all the Indian films which we show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually really want to watch uh, One Taxi Ride. I actually found it, found the films on the internet, found the film synopsis, I mean, on the internet and haven't really able to watch it. Yeah, and I, I also love your opening film. It's really fun. Yeah, shiny the, the, that was fun. The go, yeah, the shiny film. That, that, that was like a campy comedy, but no, it was just a campy comedy, but it also had layers of how an older generation and the younger generation uh, within yeah. the queer community differ in their views. For me, that is a big yeah, take yeah. off. And also like, what, is, what do you mean by freedom of expression? You know, when somebody says like, you're a fag, he might have just said it just like that, you know, I mean, uh, <laughs> as a matter of expression. Because he is, uh, he's not knowing what the correct expression is, you know, uh, and yeah. the troubles he goes through because of that particular statement. So it's also about power of freedom of speech. It's about two generations uh, not agreeing with each other. So uh, the outward thing was a campy comedy, but I think it dealt with a lot of serious issues for sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> One of the Indian films you need to watch out for, Indian feature film, which we showed at Kashish. Uh, it's called uh, uh, Fireflies, uh, Jonaki Porua. It's an SME's film about a transgender Fireflies, person. Okay. Yeah, uh, but there are two Fireflies in Kashish. One is a Mexican film, but one is an Indian film. So the Indian film uh, Fireflies uh, basically deals with a transgender person uh, and uh, her 
coming to terms with her sexuality and also about uh, coming out to parents and out to the world uh, so the person who acted won the best uh, performance best actor uh, uh, in the festival you know benjamin yeah. so it's a beautiful story per se i'm going to send it to your festival to screen it for sure ah uh, thank you <laughs> thank you very much <laughs> yeah so yeah so i think there's no more questions from the audience or oh, somebody and said it, like they love evening shadows so i love evening shadows too <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was screened at our uh, at sats prasan manishya festival last year i know with you so as a speaker like, <laughs> no being at your festival was an amazing uh, experience you have such a beautiful set of uh, festival team members and volunteers were also um. <laughs> so joyful so happy <laughs> and so hard working you know and i just love your team totally we just like i just love the time and of course uh, 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 joan was my uh, coordinator there and she was amazing you know yeah uh, so, she's in yeah. i think she's watching this <laughs> okay cool say hello to her <laughs> <laughs> okay so uh, thank you sridhar uh, thank you for talking with us this evening <laughs> thanks a lot really yeah. appreciate uh, you having this conversation to talk about enabling me to talk about kashish and also best of luck for your festival 100% uh, human rights manusya just love your festival so best of luck on that for sure thank you so is there any kashish next event nearest the next event <laughs> we are just oh we are just waking up we are trying to kind of wrap up the festival so we got to come out with this uh, with uh, we definitely are going to come out with a series of best of kashish which we do every year so we're going to have a series mm-hmm. of best of kashish events for sure whether we're going to do it online or offline we're going to work on that so year round activities will continue with kashish and of course we're going to start planning for 2021 hopefully <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, so one one last question so about uh, best of kashish do you held it every month or is it just a no, random we, time no basically uh, we basically best of kashish is <coughs> usually by invite a uh, 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 an organization in a different city invites kashish to show a best of kashish uh, uh, mm-hmm. event uh, so we go and show it there or a college uh, as i said in a different city basically invites us to show a kashish forward we go and show it so that's the way it goes and also kashish has been facilitating indian lgbtq programming in different film festivals around the world we call it uh, kashish ah, okay. global so we have wow. been working okay. with almost like 32 film festivals around the world uh, uh, so we uh, send like we have been working with manusi also where we send indian lgbtq films to be programmed at uh, your festival so similarly we have been doing it with 32 other film festivals around the world so we continue these activities basically where we help uh, the indian filmmakers to uh, uh, screen the films uh, more i mean uh, uh, not just theatrical but like more Uh, yeah. uh, at different opportunities and also try to find them some money to sustain their next film so kashish basically gets them some screening fees or royalties to enable them and also we uh, recently are launching the kudishti film grant uh, as supported mm-hmm. by lotus visual production uh, uk which offers 2 lakh rupees to a filmmaker to make uh, his or her next film so the oh, call okay. is right now open right now until august 9th we are inviting submissions of lgbt of uh, short films in the genre uh where they're going to submit the film a screenplay and uh, we're going to basically select one screenplay to be given 2 lakh rupees to make their next film so those are the things so kashish is involved in producing uh, exhibiting and distributing uh, uh, queer content uh, and helping the filmmakers you know primarily so your festival is working as a film distributor too right i <laughs> know yeah, yeah. we don't we don't distribute for money we distribute for yeah, uh, yeah, to get I... the money to the filmmakers per se you know that's what we do <laughs> we want to help the filmmakers all around all year round for sure yeah okay <laughs> so thank you so much sridhar and <laughs> thank you for your time thank you for the insights for kashish film festival it it thank it, you for it, 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 <laughs> it is a really uh, fun evening today thanks a lot it has been a fun evening speaking to you and hello and bye bye to all the people who have logged in and watching this or going to watch it afterwards at the igtv for sure so <laughs> bye bye from sridhar <laughs> raghav and kashish thank you thank you sridhar so thank you guys for uh, stay with us and today's live and for tomorrow we will have a uh, we will have a uh, film fest uh, we will talk about Oh my god, I forgot about. It. <laughs> so next week it's about uh 
film festival with oh we will talk about with uh movies that matter film festival so thank you and see you next week guys